Hello and welcome back. Today we're talking about the Data Lifecycle Manager. So imagine that you want to create, you have an EBS volume and you want to create an EBS snapshot. And you don't want to do this just once, you want to do this on a regular schedule. Or you have an EBS-backed EC2 instance and you want to create an AMI. And again, instead of doing it just once, you want to do this on a regular schedule. Well, that's the job of the Data Lifecycle Manager. You can set it up to do these uh, snapshots or AMIs to create them on a regular schedule so you don't have to do it manually. Now we're going to look at this uh, based on an example of the EBS volume. Uh, for the AMI, everything would work exactly the same. So let's say you've launched your data lifecycle manager and it's create your first snapshot A. After some time, depending on your settings, could be five hours, could be five days, uh, it creates snapshot B of the same volume and then it will delete, it will remove snapshot A. And this will allow you to save on S3 storage costs. Now, after some time again, on that regular schedule, it creates snapshot C and removes snapshot B. And that's how this process continues and that's how it works. As you can imagine, there can be a multitude of use cases for this, uh, from um, just protecting your valuable data to creating standardized AMIs to retaining backups for auditors, uh, creating disaster recovery plans, and so on. So a very useful feature, and the important thing, it's actually free. You don't have to pay anything to use Data Lifecycle Manager in AWS. Now, you might say this is all great, Kirill, but I have a question. Um, we know from previous tutorials that uh, snapshots of EBS volumes are incremental in AWS, meaning that they reference previous ones, and this is, again, a way of saving space um, or saving on S3 storage costs. So the question is, what will happen to this reference data once the snapshots are removed? And that's an absolutely fair question. We're going to have a look at that right now on the next slide. Just quickly before we do that, here is the text for this slide. So when you download the PDF, you have all of it there. So in terms of the incremental snapshots, here, here's an example, EBS volume, snapshot A, then snapshot B, and then we delete snapshot A. So what happens? So at the start, we have 10 gigabytes in our volume, and they are all copied into snapshot A. Then after some time, things change in the volume, and specifically 4 gigabytes of data are changed. So when we take snapshot B, it will only store 4 gigabytes of data, and the other 6 that were unchanged, they will be referenced uh, in snapshot A, using snapshot A. So when snapshot A is deleted, what will happen is the six gigabytes that were referenced, they will be preserved, they will be moved to into snapshot B. And what will actually be deleted are only the four gigabytes that are unique to snapshot A, the four gigabytes that are old that actually were changed and are different now in snapshot B, so they're not re needed anymore. So what is important is that the reference data is preserved and it's moved into uh, the snapshot that is referencing that data. So there we go, that's how incremental deletion works and here's some text describing the slide. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, enjoy the cloud.